Looking to escape the city? Want to find a nice rural town to get a mortgage, buy a house, and breathe some fresh air? What Californian doesn't want to, right? Today we're looking at great rural towns in Idaho, California's favorite landing spot. This is the 11th video in this series. We did the entire U.S. to start things off. Then we did New Hampshire, Montana, California, Oregon, Virginia, Georgia, Florida, Colorado, Tennessee, and here we are in Idaho the gem state. If you haven't watched these videos before, with this series we're looking for the sweet spot, a decent place to live that isn't too close to a major city, easy on the crime rate, not five hours away from a hospital, and not so far out in the sticks you get horrible internet. In the other videos I explain that not all states have 10 good rural towns, and I don't want to waste your time with some towns that are real reach just to get us up to 10. The gem state has a whole bunch of great rural towns. Sadly, most of them are just too far away from healthcare. That's important, especially since we're kind of gearing this towards two demographics, retirees and remote workers. Retirees need health care. So that knocked a whole bunch off this list. Idaho, we're left with five that are in that sweet spot. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's take a look. Number five, Island Park, Idaho. Island Park is in eastern Idaho, not too far away from the Montana border and right near Yellowstone National Park. That alone should pique some interest in living here. If you like fishing in the outdoors, this is a great place to live, especially if you're into fishing. You got a reservoir, creeks, rivers, all over the place around here. The area can get cold, so keep that in mind. I just read that they have a winter weather advisory right now in the beginning of May. Shouldn't we be getting ready for summer? They don't have a lot of people living here. Technically, they only have about 280 residents, but in the outlying areas, this little section of Idaho, there's a little bit more, but technically 280 residents. If you move here and you're from California, keep that to yourself. If anyone asks, tell them, I don't know, you move from the Ottoman Empire. They'll accept that more than a Californian. Their crime rate is 57% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. So they get a big thumbs up for that. When it comes to internet, they have Blackfoot Communications, which offers 100 Mbps, and that covers about 86% of the town. So that's solid. They also have Fibercom, which offers one gig. They only cover about 50% of the town, but you have some choices, so they get a thumbs up for internet too, which I find amazing because they are kind of out here in the sticks. Now, when it comes to healthcare, uh, you know, they're not the best. They're going to get a faded thumbs up for this. They have a medical clinic, which I'm sure does amazing work, but they're just a little limited in their size. So you're probably going to have to head down to Rexburg, Idaho, which is about an hour away. They got Madison Memorial Hospital there and all that good stuff. They also have an urgent care down there, Fall River Family Medical Urgent Care, whatever. Anything past that, another 20 minutes or so, you got Idaho Falls right down the road. So like I said, faded thumbs up for that. Still, Island Park is a great place to live. When it comes to real estate, Island Park gets a thumbs up because they got a lot to choose from. If you go in town and stuff, you're looking at anywhere from $250,000 to $350,000. When you start getting to the outskirts, it goes up in price, but you're usually getting some acreage with it. And it's like a really cool cabin type thing. And those usually start around $600,000, go all the way up to like $1.5 million. So yeah, thumbs up for that one. Just because of the variety. They got something for every price range, it seems like. Number four, Salmon, Idaho. Salmon sits on the Salmon River about two and a half hours north of Idaho Falls and about two days away from any real traffic. This place is a bit out of the way and that makes for a great rural town. Again, if fishing's your thing, pack up a U-Haul and all your gear and head to Salmon. You won't be disappointed. Surprisingly, they have a good sized medical center here. It's called Steel Memorial Medical Center and, you know, 24 hour ER, all that good stuff, which is surprising because this place is out of the way. So they get a thumbs up for that. Anything else past what they can do, you're going to have to go down to Idaho Falls. And that's like I said, two and a half hours away. But their medical center should be able to cover most anything. One blogger wrote, Salmon is where you start your adventures in central Idaho. I mean, with the Salmon River right there, you got great fishing and rafting. It's all there for you. This rural town has about 3,000 residents and a crime rate that's 52% lower than the national average. That is outstanding. So they get a big thumbs up for that. When it comes to internet, they have Custer Telephone Broadband Service, which offers one gig to about 67% of the town. And if you're not one of those lucky 67%, you got CenturyLink at 100 Mbps, which covers 98% of the town. So not bad at all. They get a thumbs up for their internet. Salmon is one of the more beautiful towns you will find in this part of Idaho. Actually, all of Idaho. 
When it comes to the real estate in Salmon, it's not that bad. I mean, they've got some older homes that probably need a little work for 220, 250,000. Right now, their lowest is actually 260,000, three bedroom, one bath. Not the greatest thing, but it's doable. After that, you start getting into the 500 and 600,000 area. Right now, they also have one for 1.4 million, but that one's a cabin. It's like a ranch thing, and it comes with 10 acres. So they get a thumbs up for that one because they have a lot to offer. And in most cases, it's not crazy expensive. Number three, St. Anthony, Idaho. St. Anthony sits about 35 to 45 minutes north of Idaho Falls on the Henry's Fork of the Snake River. Before St. Anthony was a town, it was Fort Henry. Major Andrew Henry established a short-lived fort a few miles west of where the town stands today. It was built around 1809, and they really never got much use out of it because it was finally closed down in fall of 1811. But Major Henry left a mark on the area. He did a lot of exploring here and stuff like that and got the Henry's Fork of the Snake River named after him. The name St. Anthony for the town, there's a little bit of a dispute on what it's named for. Some people think it was named after St. Anthony Falls in Minnesota, where a lot of the pioneers came from and others claim that Mormon pioneers actually named the place. Either way, about 3,500 residents like this place and they should. They've got a crime rate that's 87% lower than the national average. So they get a big thumbs up for that one. You don't find much crime in a lot of places in Idaho and this is a perfect example. When it comes to internet, they're going to get a thumbs up because they got a lot of choices. The choices don't cover the whole town, but this is what they got. Blackfoot Communication offers 100 Mbps and that covers about 73% of the town. Anthem Broadband only gives you 25 Mbps, but that covers about 99% of the town. They got another one called Sparklight, which covers 60% of the town. They offer one gig and Fibercon again offers one gig, but they only cover about 55% of the town. They also have one called Direct Communications, which only covers 2% of the town and they offer one gig. So they get a thumbs up because they got a lot of options. When it comes to healthcare, they got a few clinics and a few doctors here, so that's okay. Anything major, you're going to have to go down to Idaho Falls like 35 45 minutes away so they get a thumbs up for that could be better if they had like a urgent care or something in town I couldn't find anything like that now what I don't like about St. Anthony is it's a nice looking downtown if they could put some effort into it they got a lot of old nice brick buildings that are just waiting for someone to put a little effort into them so their downtown isn't the best, but it's inexpensive, it's safe, and there's a lot of good things to do outdoors here. A lot of fishing, things of that nature. When it comes to real estate in St. Anthony, they get a thumbs up because they're not crazy expensive. They'd probably get a bigger thumbs up, but right now they only have one lot for sale and it's going for about $225,000. So it's three bedroom, one bath, nothing spectacular, but that's a good price. In the last few months, last six months, they've sold some homes, about four or five, for around the same price. So it's one of those places, if this is where you want to move to, keep an eye on the real estate market there. Number two, Idaho City, Idaho. Idaho City sits about an hour northwest of Boise, Idaho. And this is an old gold rush town that really hasn't lost that whole gold rush, wild west type theme. I mean, they've taken a serious anti-sidewalk position. This is a rural town. It was founded in 1862 during the Boise Basin Gold Rush. This mountain town was originally called Bannock and thousands of prospectors came here hoping to strike it rich. Bannock was one of the largest settlements in the Pacific Northwest back in the day. And in case you don't know, some regional maps consider Idaho part of the Pacific Northwest with Washington and Oregon. This is a small town that only has 474 people. It's not a lot of people, but they do enjoy a crime rate that's 34% lower than the national average. That's one positive about having a small population. Not a lot of people do a lot of stupid stuff. Now, here's another thing. That crime rate is outstanding because when you got that few of people, it goes by per capita. And I mean, if someone breaks into a car, that's going to raise their crime rate through the roof. So 34% below the national average, they get a big thumbs up for that one. When it comes to internet, they got CenturyLink and Century. Link offers them just under a gig and they cover 90% of the town. So that's good. Everything else, if you're outside of the town, good luck getting internet. So they're getting a faded thumbs up for that one. When it comes to healthcare, they get a faded thumbs up too, because in town, they only have like a small health clinic and an ambulance service. So anything you need is going to be done in Boise and that's about an hour away. So that's why they get a faded thumbs up for that one. Again, like I always say, I'm sure the people at Basin Community Health Center are doing the best they can with what they got. And I'm sure 
or the ambulance guys are great, but yeah, they're just a small town. So there's no real uh, chance they're going to have like a ER or a surgery center or something like that. But they do have a bunch of creeks and a uh, hot springs right there in town. So you can go do that. Believe it or not, some people do move to areas that have hot springs because like arthritis and stuff. A lot of people feel that really helps. And as you get older, that might fit the bill for what you're looking for. When it comes to real estate in Idaho City, they get a, a faded thumbs up because like so many other places in Idaho, property is expensive. Right now, the lowest thing they have is $499,000. The highest thing they have is $725,000. So it gets pricey, but the coolest thing about Idaho is normally it comes with great scenery and probably an acre or so. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. We'd love it if you went over there and subscribed. Also, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. All right, on to number one. And number one. Driggs, Idaho. Driggs, Idaho sits a little over an hour east of Idaho Falls, Idaho, at about 45 minutes northwest of Jackson, Wyoming. It's right there on the border in what is known as the Teton Valley. It's also known as the quiet side of the Tetons. This side of the Tetons, yeah, it's not visited that much. I mean, it is, but nothing compared to the other side. One cool thing about this place, they do have a golf course not too far away. It's just over the border in Wyoming, but they actually have a golf course. Not many of the small towns in Idaho can can say that. Driggs only has a population of about 1,800 residents and they have a crime rate that's 84% lower than the national average. That is outstanding. 84%. It's like nobody told these people you could actually break into homes and cars and beat people up and you know things like that. It's like they don't even know that's an option here. One other cool thing, there's a uh, housing area or whatever called Tributary. They have their own golf course. So there's a private golf course in town. That's a plus. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but I imagine you have to to live in that area to be able to play the golf course or they have some restrictions on outsiders coming in. That's how private courses usually are. That's how they are in California, at least. When it comes to real estate, they get a faded thumbs up because it's an expensive place to buy a home here. The homes that are for sale right now, the lowest one is $699,000. They have a bunch of million dollar homes here. But if you could afford it, this is a great place to live. They even have a good size hospital, a dermatologist, orthodontist, pharmacies, all that good stuff that you'd expect in a much bigger city. They got it right here. So they get a big thumbs up for that. When it comes to internet, they're doing great. They have a company called Silver Star that offers one gig to 98.4% of the town. And that's outstanding. So they get a big thumbs up for that one too. The only thing, the cost of housing here is kind of rough. That's their biggest negative, I would say. But if you can afford it, this is an outstanding place to live. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. And don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.